Are we live? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> it's Jeanette and Grant. We are backstage at the Rachel Ray Show Prep Kitchen. And um, today we've got some really cool recipes to show you. We are going to show you the number one most downloaded recipe from all of May. Ooh, and one. Um, then we've got a no cook appetizer, which is really great for the summer season. So we are going to get to that in a little bit. I'm going to get us started right here. So the number one most downloaded recipe in all of May was Rachel's chicken milanese everything style. And so, we both had it when we did it on the show. And yes. It's really, really good. It is. It is our number one. Yeah, it was really our number one it. of May. So I'm too, excited so. to make this today. I am it'll too. Be a, it'll be a nice So um, we've got into <clears throat> this, uh, we're doing the standard breading process. If you watched our very first Facebook Live, we also made a Milanese. So it's nice to know that you guys are also huge fans of Milanese, as are we. One of our um, viewers, Rhiannon, from, she was here yesterday. Oh, she's, hey, so she's, yeah. She's, she's got morning. a unique name. Good Hi, morning. Rhiannon. Hello. Good morning, and nice to see you again. Um, if you guys have never joined one of our Facebook Live streams before, um, welcome to your first um, viewing. But um, like we always do, comment below. Let us know what you're thinking Definitely. of what we're making. Um, we are in a fully functioning kitchen here, so if you see anything that you want to add to this recipe, let us know, and we'll try to accommodate. Definitely. Um, so you're making the breadcrumbs, I'm making right? the breadcrumbs, which the is kind of the all-star of this dish. So... Um, you know, she makes, she, Rachel calls them everything style breadcrumbs, pretty much because it's got everything but the kitchen sink in there. Um, so we started out with some fine, fresh breadcrumbs. And then to that, I added some panko breadcrumbs, which are definitely my favorite kind of breadcrumbs. They're really light and fluffy. They're those, the Japanese style breadcrumbs that you can find at the grocery store really easily. Um, so to that, I added some granulated onion and some granulated garlic. I'm going to add a little pinch of red, crushed red pepper flakes into here. We like it spicy, as I yeah, remember from yesterday. Spicy. And uh, she adds in two really big tablespoons of um, toasted sesame seeds. Again, just another awesome pantry staple. And I'm gonna put in some a little pinch of oregano. Again, just really flavoring it up. Um, it's not a cutlet without some Parmigiano Reggiano. Oh, of course. You always need a little bit of cheese. In always it. a little bit it of cheese. It's a nice salty flavor and a good texture too. So it kind of burns up a little bit. Exactly. Um, and whenever you do any sort of breaded item like this, you want to season every single layer. So down yes. here I have some salt. We already seasoned that with salt and pepper. I whisked up Fla two eggs. That's flour. Oh, All yes. purpose flour. That's flour. What did I call it? Salt. Mm, it's not <laughs> salt. That would be a lot of salt. This is flour with salt and pepper in it. And then we have two eggs that I whisked up with some salt and pepper Definitely as well. Definitely salt and pepper. And so then, you know, the everything mm. style breadcrumbs have so much stuff in it. Grant, would you mind seasoning my um, breadcrumbs with some salt and pepper sure. as well? Um, uh, Richard just posted a comment below and said, can you add heat if you like it spicy? You totally can. Definitely. You want um, me to add in some more crushed red pepper flakes? Yeah, I will. A little bit of crushed Richard, red pepper, I will, but I will take more. that. Um, if you like it super spicy, you could put in some cayenne pepper as well because yeah. it's you know nice and very spicy. Yeah. Um, and the last two things Rachel adds to these was um, some fresh parsley and some fresh thyme because you know when you're adding all these um, dried spices, it's always nice to have a little bit of uh, a little fresh. fresh herbs in yeah. there and as well. And it looks really pretty. Too. It definitely does. <clears throat> all right, so we are going to get to the breading process. How's my oils looking, Grant? Oh, it looks nice and warm. This is olive oil, right? Uh, this is actually vegetable oil, but I think Rachel probably used uh, olive oil. Um, Rihanna, one of our viewers, yeah. uh, she just said that she was named after the Fleetwood Mac song, which oh, is interesting. that is a cool fact about that you, is Rihanna. Cool. Thanks for um, two days in I also want to say hello to Joseph, who just posted a comment below. Hi, Joseph, from Hi, Florida. Joseph. Watch out for those gators in Florida. <laughs> oh, my God, did you see that? It was huge. I did. It was yes. like 15 feet. Ooh, watch um, out. So we're gonna run this chicken cutlet. Um, this was just a chicken breast that I butterflied and pounded out, um, cut it like a book, pounded out with a, the back of a skillet or a meat pounder. I'm gonna run it through the seasoned flour, through the seasoned egg, and then I'm gonna run it through our everything style breadcrumbs. And then I'm going to get that into our nice hot skillet. And this is gonna fry up really beautifully and nicely. Ooh, hello. <laughs> Um, Anna the oil is, is ready. she's asking if we throw salt over our shoulder. Rachel always throws salt over her she shoulder. She does always I don't do that. We, we didn't do it. Throw, Let's do it. Throw some over my shoulder. Is it shoulder. your left or your right? It's your left. Okay. Don't so we, hit me in the face with salt. There you go. Perfect. Now we'll have great luck. Great. <laughs> uh, Bridget just wrote in and said, how long should the oil heat before the chicken goes in? We had this preheating on low right before we came. I would say um, you want to make sure it ripples when before you put, any, put anything in. And you really want to make sure that the oil is a nice temperature because um, if it's too hot, you're going to scald this. And if it's too cold, the chicken cutlet's just going to completely sop up all that, all that oil and it's going to get really, really soggy. So I'm going to throw this in. That looks pretty yeah, good. Yeah, it's nice and warm. Uh, <laughs> Very, hot. <laughs> you know, when the herbs, when the fresh herbs hit the oil, the water in it explodes a little. So just be very careful. Um, um, I want to say hello to Jenny from Toledo. Hi, Jenny from a Toledo. A fellow Ohioan. I'm, I'm going to go wash my hands. Yeah. Um, and Grant, you are going to make the uh, sauce that goes on top of this one, right? <clears throat> 
Um, yeah, so this, um, as, if you guys watched her very first um, Facebook Live video, or if you've ever watched Rachel make uh, milanese before, you know that milanese is always topped with a nice fresh um, salad. Um, this one's a little different where it's topped with um, a bitter greens, tomato, and basil raw sauce. So in here I'm getting the sauce started. I just put in a few cups of arugula, a nice spicy um, bitter green. Uh, but if you don't like, you know, arugula, you can use kale, you can use spinach, pretty much anything that's um, nice, leafy, dark green. Um, I put in a few cups of basil. And to that I'm going to add the juice of a lemon. And then we're also going to put in some garlic, two cloves of garlic, and some salt and pepper. And then we take that sauce and we're going to toss it with some fresh tomatoes and some onion. That's going to be a, a nice fresh topper for our sauce. Anna wants to know how you know when the chicken is done. Um, Anna, I I'll show you once we get to the stage of brown that um, it is. But um, that it should be when you're when it is done. But I would say if your oil is pretty warm, I'd say maybe like two to three minutes on the first side, maybe a little bit less on the other side. Yeah. Um, and we've got a trick here that I'll show you that we pop it into a low oven on a sheet tray with a baking rack, and then you can make your cutlets well in advance before you're about to have dinner, and they'll stay really nice and warm in the oven. Yeah. Um, I think another great tip too. I feel like if people get really nervous about frying chicken and they're not sure if it's going to be all the way cooked. Um, I feel like people worry a little bit too much about that because it's not yeah. really cooked. You can just throw it in the oven and you can finish cooking it there. Definitely um, better under than over because you can't go back from over, yeah, but you can exactly. always revive under. Yeah, always, always pop that in the, in the oven. Timothy has a question. Timothy says he likes dashes of cayenne pepper instead of flakes. Ooh. Maybe um, I'll, should I add that to the bitter sauce? Maybe? Add it to the sauce, yeah. I'm going to grab some of that. Great. Got our wall of spices over there. Um, I'm dicing up a little bit of, I diced up some tomatoes. Um, we have these really beautiful cocktail tomatoes that um, we got from the market. Um, any tomatoes you have will do. You, we were talking about before how it's finally tomato season. Yeah. And it's such a short season, so really get out there and like get your tomato on because yeah. this is the time to eat them. Any tomatoes that look good are great for this recipe. Exactly. Um, so if you see in this bowl right here, I have our bitter green raw sauce. You just want to buzz it up until it's nice and smooth. Um, and then we're going to take that and we're going to add it to our tomatoes. Oops. I do want to give that a little taste to make sure it's seasoned. I'm slicing up a little red onion here. Oh, I like the cayenne pepper in there too. That's good. A nice add. Thank you for the mm. suggestion. Yeah, thank you, Timothy. Um, so do you want to add that to that? Yeah. Great. So then this is going to be the fresh topper to our cutlet once that's done. I think it's going to be pretty perfect to flip if I can show you what that's going to look like on the first side. So that is how you know when your cutlet is ready to go. That is beautiful and golden yeah, brown. Good. So we're going to flip that and we're going to let that go for another minute or two and then I'm going to pop that, like I said, in the low oven. Um, Jared is asking what oil we're using to cook the chicken and does it matter? So we're using olive oil today um, and we're mostly using olive oil because of the flavor of olive oil. Just tastes really nice. Uh, but you could use, you know, canola oil for this if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much any oil that you have in the pantry will work. But we prefer olive oil for a uh, Something cutlet. about cooking in coconut oil also. I Oops. find that that holds the temperature really nicely. Yeah. Um, I like frying cutlets in coconut oil as well. Gabby says, can I make uh, make it, make this with a turkey cutlet? Yeah. Absolutely. Sounds really good. You could do this with a turkey cutlet. Rachel makes those um, pork schnitzel from time to time. Yeah, those and are really good that's too. That's a really underutilized thing. I yeah. just remembered how much I love when she makes yeah, those. Totally. You could totally do this with a pork cutlet as well. Um, Crystal is asking, is, was that a red onion or a shallot? We used the red onion, but we you did. could use the shallot if you yeah, want to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you could also use some scallions, pretty much anything that's this looks nice. so good. Did you show them what this looks like? Yeah, this, this is really yummy, awesome. right? Um, um, so I would toss this with just some cooked pasta. Totally. Right? Yeah, this and that's a, a great thing to make for the summertime because it's, it's raw. You don't it's have to raw. Cook it. You didn't cook it. Um, so, like I said, today's uh, kind of episode of Facebook Live was inspired by the top 10 recipes um, that you guys downloaded in May. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to thank you guys for always participating in Facebook Live and cooking shows, re recipes from the show because we're always back here in the kitchen and it's really cool. We're making all of Rachel's delicious food and it's really cool to see what you guys are cooking at home. So we love every month when we get the recap yeah. from our viewers of what you guys are cooking that um, we, we were happy to recreate this today because we'd love to see what you guys are making from the show. Um, but it was funny because two uh, things from the top 10 of May had were called everything style. Yeah. So 
This next recipe is a little bit inspired by your want for everything style food. R Rachel made these awesome everything style chicken fingers with a tahini dipper. Do you remember that day yeah, in the that kitchen? Yeah, was really yummy. We were loving them. So Grant has this really awesome idea and it kind of fit in great for summer because it's a no-cook appetizer yeah. that travels super well. Yeah, so what we're gonna make over here is an everything style cheese ball. Um, I think a lot of the times when people think of cheese balls, we think of the holidays or like winter. Um, but these are actually really great for summertime too because they involve, you know, pretty much zero to, to little cooking. Um, this one you don't have to cook anything at all. And I think it's a really great, like, refreshing thing to have with, like, you know, a crudite platter or by the pool yeah. or something like that. So everything in this cheese ball is any flavor you would find in a bagel shop. So we're going to make a cheese ball and then we're going to top it with everything bagel spice. Um, and everything bagels are my absolute favorite bagels, yeah. aren't What about you? Yeah, me you too. I love bagels. an everything bagel with scallion cream cheese. Oh, and yeah. speaking of scallions, that's what I'm chopping up right here. <laughs> and I'm going to throw that into a bowl with one brick of cream cheese. And then I'm going to start chopping up our bacon as well. You could buy pre-cooked bacon from the store if you wanted Definitely. to. I'm going to take out this cutlet. Um, really Carla's asking, what size pan is that? And is it an RR pan? It, it is a Rachel Ray brand is. pan. It's one of our favorite Rachel pans. Um, this is one of her newer ones. It's really um, wide and shallow, so it's actually nice for cooking. It's a 14-inch pan, yeah, okay. and um, we, we love it for shallow frying or for stir frying. We, yeah, we love I, it if you guys have watched our Facebook videos before, you've seen this pan. We probably use, we use it, it all the time. time. All right, I'm going to pop this into the oven. This cutlet looks awesome. Again, I have the oven about 200 degrees, 250. And that's going to stay for however long we want that to stay in for. Jeanette, you have a fan. Lori oh. is asking if you could do some stunt toast for her. I would be happy to do some stunt toast for you, Lori. If you guys are unfamiliar with Jeanette's talent, she is the, our <laughs> official bread toaster official. here at the Rachel Ray Show. I've got a certificate and everything. Everything. Um, hello to Rihanna, uh, Rihanna's teen, Shayla. Hey, Shayla. Hey, Shayla. Is Shayla also named after a Fleetwood Mac song? <laughs> I don't know. I'm unfamiliar with their song yeah. called Shayla, but they might have one. Um, so right now I'm chopping up our bacon. And then to this bowl, Jeanette, could you add a spoonful of horseradish? Yes, I love prepared horseradish. Yeah, it's really yummy. Can I add a lot? Be nice and spicy. Yeah, I like extra horseradish too. Um, catch you guys up on what's happening in the, in the prep kitchen today. Um, we are in the middle of doing our second recipe. Our first recipe we made, uh, the number one most downloaded recipe from May from the yeah. show, which was Rachel's chicken milanese everything style. And um, since we were so inspired by your love for everything style food, we were recreating a dish that uh, we made on the show a few years ago, which was the everything cheese ball. Um, and that was kind of just the essence of the everything bagel, yeah. all in a cream cheese ball. And I'm a big fan of a cheese ball. This is easy, easy for entertaining. It's great to travel with. And I've never met somebody who doesn't like a cheese ball, nope. right? And if I did, they're probably not our friend. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say hello to Maria from Ontario. Hi, Maria. Hey, Maria from <laughs> Canada. Um, Can I add this in? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, speaking of our top recipes of May, do you have a favorite uh, recipe of May that we made? Jeanette? I do, actually. And it turns out you guys loved it, too, because it made the list. It was Rachel's sour cream and onion patty melt. Oh, do that you was remember good, when she made that? Melt, she yeah. made a chip and dip patty melt, so the essence of like of onion dip. But she put sour cream and onion chips on the burger. It was like a grilled cheese with a burger with and chips. And potato chips. It was so good. We were Jeanette, high fiving and Rachel. You, you love chips on your I sandwich. love chips on my sandwich. <laughs> so chips on my burger is even better. Um, Del Tamara from Delaware says hello. Hello, Tamara. Hey, Tamara. Thanks for watching. Um, I think my favorite recipe of May was the um, sriracha, uh, you remember it better than I do, the sriracha honey, chicken honey, and lettuce wraps. Lettuce wraps, yes. I forget what it was called. They were they, It was the, like the number The chicken lettuce wraps. Yeah. yeah. You guys liked it too. Um, I love a lettuce wrap in the summer because yeah. it's, yeah, it's just nice and light. It's like eating a salad but with the satisfaction of eating a taco. Exactly. Oh, it's really taco. Yummy. Um, would you mind giving me a little sheet of plastic wrap? I we're going to wrap up this cheese ball. Um, so just to catch you guys up, right now we're making an everything bagel style cheese ball. So in here I have some cream cheese, some sour cream, some white cheddar cheese, um, some scallions, some bacon, a little bit of horseradish, and some salt and pepper. I added a lot of horseradish. A lot of horseradish. <laughs> <laughs> you can put as much as you'd like. Um, so now what we're going to do good? is wrap this up. Bigger. Yeah. We're going to wrap that up. And you want to chill it for a few hours until it's nice and firm, and then we're going to roll it in our everything spice. Awesome. So you just take that. I leave this part to Grant, because he's just much better <laughs> at this part than I am. This is a tricky part, but um, basically what I do whenever I do this is I just take the two ends together, 
and then kind of push these two like that, and then you kind of like you know wrap it up like you're making a ball of mozzarella. Just or something. That's so much nicer than I could do it. I'm gonna give it another sheet of plastic. I think so. so yeah. Fall apart in the Terry fridge. says, "Can you make cheese balls with other non-cream cheese cheese?" Absolutely. Yeah. I think um, if you're a vegan or you don't eat dairy, they make that uh, tofu cream cheese that we really like a lot. Yeah. Um, and that would work probably same amount of cream cheese. Right? I can't see why that wouldn't work. Yeah, it's, I, I would think you'd use equal amounts. But yeah, try it out at home and let us know how it works. Mm -hmm. I would love to hear about that. Yeah. You could definitely um, do this with that um, soft herb cheese, too, that Borsan cheese. Oh, Borsan cheese? That'd be really yeah. cool, too. And they'd probably save you some time of, uh, of spicing this guy up because it's got some spices in it already. Would you mind popping that in the fridge? I, I think we know. have another one we in do. there. We do. I'm running gonna, to the walk-in. We're going right to roll that one up. Excellent. Um, so now what we're going to do is make our everything bagel spice that's going to um, be the coating for our cheese ball. Um, so if you've ever had an everything bagel before, um, you know that it's just a little bit of minced onion, some poppy seed, some minced dried garlic, some sesame seed, yeah. and some coarse salt. And now you just mix it together and that's going to be the coating for our cheese ball. I'm going to put a little bit of pepper in there too. Hi to Deanna from Galt, California. Hi Deanna. Hello. How's Thanks it going? Thanks for watching. Good morning to you, um, three hours behind. Amy is asking what our favorite type of cheese ball is. Ooh. We've done so many of them I on know. the show. I think my favorite one was, um, it was a French onion cheese ball. So it was like cream cheese and sour cream mixed with some caramelized onions. Yeah. And then we coated it in some fried onions. Oh yeah. It was so good. I and remember put it on that. some butter crackers. Very yummy. Sounds delicious. Now do I just plop this right on there? Yeah, so just okay, put great. it right in the middle and then I'm just gonna coat it. I'm making a mess. That's all right. Ooh. This is the fun part because it, it is the messy part, but that's the part. We like getting best. messy. If you've been watching us here on Facebook Live, <laughs> um, I just have to say one of my favorite face, uh, one of my favorite cheese ball memories. Do you have cheese ball memories? I have a cheese I ball have memory. So many. Okay. Um, was when we were celebrating Christmas in the kitchen with Rachel, and she oh, loves yeah. this cheese ball. And we made um, it was it was holiday time, and so we made a cheese ball snowman tower, and mm -hmm. she went ballistic. She loved that. We made it with like the we didn't we with the, we did this yeah. one. The everything bagel side, but we made it a little snowman. Um, that's a great tip too that you just brought up. If you're having like a brunch party or something, you could use oh, this yeah. as a spread for bagels. So you could just pop this out on the, the counter and totally. people can put that right on top of their bagels. Oh yeah. Um, so I'm gonna put that right there. I'm gonna go wash up real quick. Go I'm, ahead. I'm gonna chop some veggies because like Grant said, um, to make this a little bit more summertime, it's kind of nicer. We do have some pita chips, some pretzel chips, but um, I like to serve this with a nice crudite if you're bringing it by the pool, you're bringing it over. And this is big party season. So, you know, graduation parties, barbecues. This is yeah. a great one to bring over. It's really easy to kind of throw in the car. And here's our cheese bar right here. So we have some carrots, we have some pita chips, some pretzels, and to that we're gonna add some cucumbers that Jeanette's slicing up so nicely. I slice them on a bias because then it gives you more surface <clears throat> area for whatever you're dipping it in. Oh, so, yeah, it's like a chip almost. <laughs> exactly, we make cucumber um, chips. Benny is asking if you could make this cheese ball without the horseradish. 100%. You absolutely could. Absolutely. Um, a cheese ball is a great thing to um, get kind of playful with too. You can add anything in there that you like. A little Definitely. hot sauce if you like that. Um, pretty much anything you would like you could put into a cheese ball. I think that's why we like cheese balls so much. It's so Probably. easy to make like different so flavors easy. of them and stuff. Yeah. Um, so right now we are making the everything bagel uh, cheese ball. We just finished that up. Um, and I think we're about to plate our um, number one recipe of May, right? Which was, was the, yeah, the chicken milanese everything style. The everything horseradish or the everything chicken milanese. Yes. Um, and just uh, if you guys have tuned in before, we're going to be here all week. Um, so yeah. tomorrow and we're here Friday. All week. <laughs> tomorrow we're actually going to make um, drinks, dinner, and mm. dessert from the grill. Yep. Which I'm pretty excited Stay about. Stay outside. Keep your kitchens cool. Yeah. People. Um, and we actually just um, tested the drink yesterday. And it was very good. I'm very excited to show you. It's really good. I don't want to give too much away, but it's sweet, it's spicy, and it's one of my favorite things. And it may have time. gin in it. <laughs> maybe. Just maybe. All right, why don't we show them this gorgeous cheese ball? Yeah, let's cut into this. I have a knife right here. Here, I want to just hold it up real quick. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. I, know. I just want to dig in. I just want to eat. We're it. hungry. So you've okay. got, again, the cheese ball that has all the goodness from the bagel place in it, rolled in the spices of an everything bagel. Roxanne from Hamburg is watching. Right Hi, now. Roxanne. In Hamburg, New York. Hello, Roxanne. I'm going to dip one of my uh, cucumbers in it. Here, I'll make one for you. Oh, thanks. Give me your little Darling. cucumber. Did you just call me your little me... cucumber? Yeah. <laughs> this uh -oh. looks good. Why do we take such big bites? Oh my gosh, Because we're hungry. We're hungry That is people. so good. This is really good. I know, but they're all watching us eat. Um, Yum. Is it time to plate up the milanese? Yeah, or? I think we should plate that up, right? Get cream cheese on my face or no? Yeah. Do I have cream cheese on my face? No cream cheese. You're clean. <laughs> 
Um, you guys asked us what our favorite cheese ball is. What's your favorite cheese ball? What's your favorite cheese Let ball? Let us know. Maybe you'll see it here in an episode of Facebook Live. Uh, Maria's saying you could roll it like a like a log, which is a really good idea. Definitely. Because then you could just like slice it up and put it right on the top mm -hmm. of the cracker. That's a great idea. So this is our nice warm chicken cutlet. Mm -hmm. Looks the beautiful. The everything style. Number one recipe from May. Uh, this was Rachel's great recipe. When she made this on the show, actually, it was the day that um, Jesse Smollett, is mm -hmm. that his name? From and Empire. From Empire, mm -hmm. one of our favorite shows. And Curtis Stone was in the house. Yeah. And that was just a really fun day in the Two kitchen. Two wonderful people. Yeah, we love any day that Curtis Stone's in our kitchen. He's the best. <laughs> I want to say hello to Carmen from Salinas. Hi, Carmen. Salinas. I don't know Salinas. where that is, but I it think sounds like a fun might place. Maybe in California. I'm not sure where that is. Oh. Where is Salinas? Are you in Salinas, California? Um, Amy wants to know what else makes a really good dipper um, for the cheese ball. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Pretty much anything. I like, sometimes I just like to serve a cheese ball with some toast points, just some white bread that you toast up a little bit. When we did this on the show, I think we served it with bagel chips. Yeah. Um, which you could buy store-bought bagel chips. You can also make them at home. You just slice up a bagel nice and thin and toast it in the oven with a little olive oil, salt, pepper on top. When you're done having everybody over for your bagel brunch party, you've got yeah. those leftover bagels. They are bagel chips for the kids' lunch boxes the next day. Totally. Um, Jared is uh, answering our cheese ball question. He loves a honey Dijon Ooh, cheese Oh, have ball. we ever made one of those? I don't know. That Jared, sounds really that's good. that's a really good idea. Yeah, I'm into that. And then Wendell says he loves a peanut butter and jelly cheese ball. Ooh, we did do that on the show, we did. didn't we? It was a dessert oh. cheese ball. It was uh, cream cheese, peanut butter, and you swirl some grape jam in there. And we were just... And roll it in peanuts. Oh, that one it was, was really so, yummy. It was a dessert, yeah. yeah. Dessert cheese ball. We were just toying around with the idea of doing a peanut butter and jelly time uh, Facebook Live. Oh, yeah. Maybe next that sounds week. That would be kind of fun. Who doesn't love peanut butter and jelly? I know. it's. I, you know that I have like a peanut butter and jelly snack almost every single almost day. Almost every day. Around 4 o'clock, I get a little hangry, and I need a little PB&J. PB&J fix. All right, so what I did here is I took that beautiful raw pesto sauce that Grant made so quickly in the food processor. It was uh, baby arugula with some basil and um, a bunch of lemon Check that out. and um, some olive oil and uh, salt and pepper, mm -hmm. right? And uh, we mixed that up with just some tomatoes and red onions. Mm, and that made a super simple topper for our milanese. I think that looks great. Yeah. What do you think? Good. Lindsay is asking, um, she said she loves Curtis oh. Stone. What's he like in real life? Well, I have to tell you that Jeanette has the biggest crush He's on Curtis He's really Stone. dreamy. <laughs> <laughs> I hope your husband's not watching oh, sorry, Jimmy. <laughs> Love Curtis Stone. Um, but he's great, he's yeah. so great to work with because like he just he's so good at what he does and yeah. like when you're watching him and you're helping him with all of his segment stuff he's just like every once in a while he'll like grab an onion while you're talking and he'll just like chop it with his eyes closed and you're like did yeah. you just do that and I don't know if you guys have ever watched him on the show we did two sort of like on the fly segments where yeah. he oh, made gosh. a bunch of pastas on he's the fly so good at that. and a bunch of chicken wings on the fly and he's so much fun to watch in the kitchen because he's just so smart and so fast. Uh, he's pretty incredible. Very few like people you could give a challenge like that to who wouldn't just like freak out. I think I would probably. I would freak out. I yeah. couldn't do that. <laughs> um, we do have a little nickname for him in the kitchen. Sometimes we call him Cutest Stone. Cutest. Because he's the cutest. He's the best. <laughs> Love us some Curtis Stone. Hi, Curtis. <laughs> Hi, Curtis. Um, are we, we're going for this, yeah, right? Yeah, we're just going right, to try cool. it, right? Yeah, it I think good. so. It yeah. looks beautiful. Awesomely cooked right through the center. I had it in the <clears> oven, so if it was a little bit undercooked from the stove, it cooked right in the yeah. middle. In the I would also say that's a very impressive dish. If I was doing oh. that at like a dinner party, I'd be like, wow. Yeah. You know what And you doing. saw us make it all right here. Our first chicken milanese was a 15-minute meal. I don't have any doubts that this also wasn't a 15-minute oh, meal. Yeah. We just didn't put the timer on today. We, we needed yeah. a little 15-minute break. That's How was good. it? Is it good? Mm -hmm. That's really good. Let's see. I love the panko breadcrumbs because it makes it really, really crunchy. Two different textures. I understand why this is the number one recipe of May. Thanks, guys. Makes An excuse for us to eat it for lunch. <laughs> Two. I'm joking. Uh, Melissa's asking, can you uh, serve milanese immediately after frying, or do you need the oven? You can serve it right out of the fryer, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can serve it right out of the fryer, but it's also a great, you know, make-ahead thing for a dinner party because you can fry them ahead of time. Like Grant said, it's this would great. be such a nice, impressive dish for a dinner party. And why not get that all out of the way before people, your guests start coming over and cool your kitchen down? I know yeah. when I have guests over for a dinner party, the last thing I want to do is be cooking in the kitchen. So I get yeah. everything done first. Because then you have more time for cocktails. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, all right. Well, I think that's, I, oh, wait, we've got, oh, hi to Bonnie from Ontario. We've got ooh, lots of friends in Ontario today. Hi, Canadians Canada. watching. Hey, guys. Very nice. Um, well, thank you guys so much for joining us. We love doing Facebook Live, and we are well, going to be here both tomorrow and Friday. Mm -hmm. um, like we said earlier, on tomorrow, or uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. On tomorrow, <laughs> we are making uh, drinks, dinner, and dessert straight from the grill. Um, so come back here tomorrow. Um, on the Rachel Ray Show Facebook page at 1230, and we'll be here. Um, and then on Friday, we're going to do the recipes that you guys picked, and you chose two no-cook no suppers. No-cook summer so on, suppers. No-cook summer suppers. So on Friday, Jeanette's going to make one. I'm going to make one. 
We're going to do a lot of cooking, but without a stove or an oven at all. So come back on Friday to see that. But we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining Bye. us. Bye.